Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to worship and praise you, Lord. Lord, may our life, Lord, be worship to you. That every part of us, Lord, would bring glory to Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. I have, I want to start off with a question. Well, not really a question, but a statement. You need to read your Bible. Omar, how does that make you feel when I tell you you need to read your Bible? Good man. man. Okay, okay, how about you? When I say you need to read your Bible. Uh, I think a part of me says yes. A part of me is, oh, I don't want it to be like before. As, like, I read the Bible, you know, previously, mm -hmm. religiously because I was told to, because I was, and so for me, when I get that you need to read the Bible, then it's like, my spirit is like, yes, I need to get into it. But then there's a part of me that's like, oh, but it's not an obligation, but it's a response that I'm reading. Amen. Omar, how does this sound like a demand to you? The way you say it. The way you say it. Praise the Lord. So I guess the way I said it, how about you should read your Bible? How does that sound? Does that sound better? When we say, you know, you need to read your word, you need to get in your word, does it sound religious? Yeah. Yeah. Does it sound like you know placing burdens or demands on you? And, and a real and a question is, not really a question. It can sound religious. We we grew up I don't know, to our parents or relatives telling you need to read your word, you need to get in your word. But it all goes back to what is the source of it? The way I said it, you know, what is the source of me saying it to you? When I was preparing for this, it reminded me of a sermon I listened a while back. And in the sermon, the person was sharing a little story. He's, in the story, it was a church. This young person walks up, and he, he memorized Psalms 23. And he said it in front of the whole congregation. And the congregation is just quiet, crickets. And then an older person gets up goes up, opens his Bible, Psalm 23, same chapter, reads it. He looks up, everybody's in tears. And the younger one goes to the older one's like, what, what was that? I, read, I said the same exact verse, same thing. How come they reacted to yours, but not to mine? And the older person said, you know the book, I know the author. And going back to the source, when people say, you need to read your word, a lot of the times they're referring to, you need to know the book, you know. But when I say, you know, you need to read your word, I'm not saying that you need to know the book. I'm encouraging you need to know the author of the book, the one who wrote it. And so today, I want to speak on the word and the importance of it. when I say the word, what, is, what does that mean to you? When I say the word, the Bible. Well, Bible word? Yeah. Uh, Jesus. Jesus. How about you, Riley? Sorry? When I say um, the Bible, what, is that, what does the Bible mean to you? Um, the past, present, future of the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. Is it a, is it a history book? Is it a fairy tale? Is it a study book where we, you know, study the Bible? Is it informational? Is it religious? Is it a religious book? When you ask people, you know, what is the Bible to you? All those things can come up. But in reality, the Bible is the living word of God. 
from Genesis, the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, from front to back, all it speaks about is Christ. Like my sister was saying, you know, it's past, present, future of the Lord. Mika, would you be willing to read 2 Timothy 3.16? by God not just the New Testament not just the old one not just the Gospels but everything from Genesis to the Revelation that I was mentioning it speaks of Christ another word for inspired could mean God breathed breath mm -hmm. and Katie would you be willing to read Genesis 2-7 Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Amen. The Lord God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. When the breath of Christ God enters into something and becomes living. And back to 2 Timothy, all scripture is breathed by God. In other words, meaning that all scripture is living because the origin of it is by the Lord. And if we can go to Hebrews 4.12. Riley, would you be willing to read that? Thank you, sister. The word is living and active. It just confirms what we were just reading that that the scripture is inspired God breath living. And you know, personal question. We're fellowshipping on uh, not personal, practical. We're fellowshipping on that Friday. When we read the word, does it does it feel like it's living to us? Omar, when you read it, does the word always feel like it's living to you? No. How about you, Rainbow? When you read, does the word always feel like it's living? No. How about you, Katie? No. No. Not all the time. Amen. Yeah, so it doesn't always feel like it's living. But should that disqualify us from reading it? No. I remember, I used to be part of a Bible study about four years ago. And we would always meet up every Friday for like two hours. We would just talk about the Lord. And a person leading it told, told me, and I feel another brother, he said, if you're not receiving revelation from the Word when you're reading, then why are you reading it? What's the purpose? And I thought the enemy twisted it up. Oh, since you know, I'm reading the word and I'm not getting this crazy revelation, then why waste my time? 
And because you know, like we're all admitting, the word doesn't always feel living. And to me, when I would read, it wasn't living. And I allowed, I allowed it to disqualify me from entering and speaking his word because I wasn't receiving anything. Maria, can you read John 1, 1 and verse 14? beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. That Word is Christ. And the Scripture speaks of our Lord and Savior Christ. I want to ask another question. So we know what the word is, we know it's living, we know the word speaks of Christ from, Gen from Genesis to Revelation, it's all about the Lord. We just read that the word, the Bible is Christ, it's living. And the next question I want to ask is, why is it important to read it? Julie, why is it important for you personally to read the word? Well regardless of whether it feels like I get a crazy revelation from the word or not, it still washes me with the water of the word. So my mind gets renewed and I'm reminded of what the Lord's truth is um, every single time I read it. Like there's no exception to that if I'm actually open to, to hear it. How about you, Brother Omar? Why is the word important to you to read it, to spend time in it? When I thought about that question, two two aspects came into mind, and both of you guys touched on it. It's it's life to us, to our spirits. And another one is, it's our it's our weapon, because our weapon is it physical but spiritual, which I'll begin on that next time about the word being a weapon to us. But today I want to fellowship on the word being life to us, and how is it life? Because again, you know, we're reading the physical word, but like our brother Omar was saying, that when we're reading the physical word, within our spirits, our spirit is getting, is getting full, it's, it's eating of the word. Shaw, can you read Matthew, we'll go Matthew 4, verse 1 through 4, please. was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Thank you, brother. I want to focus on verse 4. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We're going to do a little quick vocabulary. 
So there's in Greek there's uh, two words for the word word. There's logos, which is what before us the written word, the Bible, and then there's rhema, which is the spoken word. How rhema? Yeah. <laughs> and the one is the spoken word, which is when you know we're reading a word and it, <laughs> that revelation that we're talking about when the word becomes living to us. And we see here that we are to live by every rhema word of Christ, every spoken word. Now, not when I say that, I'm not you know, disqualifying that we shouldn't read the physical word because without the physical word, we can't get that rhema word, that revelation, that spoken word from Christ. We don't we don't live by just the physical word. What what word was rainbow? Uh, rainbow? rainbow? Yeah. Spoken word? Uh -huh. Or other word uh, revelation? How the Lord spoke directly to your heart. We're going back to what I was just saying how we aren't just to live by the logos, mm -hmm. but we live by the rainbow. The what the Lord has been showing us. And I want to read 2 Corinthians 3, 6. Who has made us? I'll, I'll start at verse 4. Such confidence we have through Christ towards God that we were not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God, who has made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And just like I was mentioning a little earlier, we ought to live by the, by with the written word, because we know the letter kills, Maria, how does, how does that speak to you? That the letter kills what the spirit gives life. Um, I think how the letter kills, I think about like the law. You know, being told to do things to measure up and you never can. The more yeah. you try, the more you die. And life, the living, the rainbow of the word is, it's Christ doing it through you. Uh, and recognizing that you only go from glory to glory. Amen. Yeah, because the, the Pharisees, they knew the word. The Sadducees, they knew it. Paul knew the word. But then we still see that they crucified Christ. Paul knew the word, but he was, he was persecuting the church. Saul. Saul, sorry about that. And going back to what I was sharing earlier about my experience, how I had a brother tell me, you know, if you're not reading, if you're not receiving revelation, then why are you why are you reading? So now I came to the scriptures, you know, reading everything, trying to fabricate my own revelation, just so I can have life in the scriptures. And one day I was reading through John five, John five thirty nine. And it says, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me. And you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. And like our brother was mentioned, when you read the word, it does something in you. And I was reading that and something in me was, was being touched. So I asked him, I was like, Lord, why is this verse sticking out to me? And he said, because that's how you're approaching my word. I was approaching the word of God to have these revelations. Thinking that, you know, if I have a greater revelation, then, then I might have life. But my intention to read or for reading the word was never about coming to Christ. That was, that was far from it. I wanted to have more knowledge. I, I wanted to just sound more spiritual. 
Will you show me that that, that means nothing? Are you willing to come to me to have that light? So we see that life, it begun, begins with coming to him. Mika, can you read 1 John 2, 7? And Julie, can you open John 14, 26? Did I say two seven? Five, five. Oh, forgive me. First John chapter two, verse twenty-four. Yeah. <laughs> and as for you, the anointing which you received from him abide in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, it is true and it is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you abide in him. Amen. And Julie? John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Amen. So what we see in both of them, it says he will teach you. The Helper. So... This anointing is Christ within us. Going back to what I was reading earlier in John 5, that we are unwilling to come to him to have life. When that life is Christ, and instead of trying to approach the scriptures of, you know, what can I get, what can I get out of it? We see the, the Lord, he's our teacher. He's willing to open up the scriptures to us. Last night, we were fellowshipping about the eunuch and Philip, how the eunuch was reading out of the book of Isaiah. And, and Philip asked him, like, you know, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, no, like, how can I? And Philip was able to, to teach him. And that's how it is with us in Christ. We can read and Christ is asking us, do you understand what you're reading? And many times we avoid it. We were so caught up in trying to understand that ourselves that we completely ignore that the teacher is right there. Another and one thing that really spoke to me too, because someone has asked, you know, how do we read the word? And it was like, so if the word of God is about Christ, you know, let's say. Omar, let's say you have an autobiography, it's all about you. And I'm right by you, I'm reading your autobiography. And I'm seeing you write certain words, and you're sitting there looking at, you know, it's like, and I'm like trying to fabricate what you mean. You're probably looking at me like, I'm right here, why don't you just ask me? And it's like, you know, when we talk with the Lord and read his word, it's like, he's right there. And it's easy as you know, Lord, what, what did you mean when you wrote it this way? What do, you, what do you mean that, you know, this verse, how does this relate with me? You know, he, the word is living, it's about him. And the same anointing that rose him from the dead lives in us. And what I'm saying, you know, it's, it's as simple as that. The living word is Christ. The anointing within us is Christ. And if we don't really understand a scripture or a verse, it's easy as, Lord, what did you mean by this? 
And then the second part of what Julie was reading. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Have you guys ever re read a verse and you didn't understand it? So, you, you know, a few days later you go to a Bible study and then we start talking about that verse. And now that verse finally makes sense to you. And that's how the spirit works. You know, we can read the whole book of Matthew in one city. It doesn't make sense. And then someone's talking to, you know, well, I don't want to say the first book of Matthew because that's about, first chapter, it's about the genealogy. So let's say John 15. That's always a good uh, chapter to fellowship on. You're reading John 15. Nothing really sticks out to you. And then you meet up with a brother or sister like, you know, how do I abide in the Lord? And then the Lord brings John 15 back to mind. You're like, oh, that's what he means. And then you, you're willing, you're able to share that to him. When you first read it, that was the logos. But then when it clicked to your head what he means, that became a reign of revelation. And now you're able to bring that, like, this is what the Lord just showed me. This is how you abide in Christ, just remaining in him. And that's what I love about the Spirit. Like Omar was mentioning, not every time, you know, we're going to get something. But the Spirit will bring things to remembrance. I was talking to Julia, Julia earlier this week, and she was sharing with Riley as well. We are fellowship about it. How she was mentioning to you that the reading the Word is also like eating food. You know, you eat food. You, you're not going to, you know, feel the nutrition right away. Maybe a day later or a few hours later, while it's being digested, then you start feeling the effect of it. And that's how it is with the word as well. When we read it, sometimes it's not right away. Give it a day, give it a two days. Then you're going to start, you know, digesting it and receiving what, what's actually being spoken to you. There is times, you know, where you're going to feel it right away. If you're exhausted and you have a drink of water, you're going to feel it. But then there's times where, you know, you're continually eating, eating, and then you feel it as well. But even relating the word with food, it's, that's how Christ does it as well. He relates it all with food. And you know, do we eat only when we're hungry? Oh my, do you eat only when you're hungry? No. Katie, do you eat only when you're like hungry or starving? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Lord. <laughs> but what I was mentioning, what I was wanting to say <laughs> is that's how it is with the word. We don't come to the word when we're only like starving or hungry spiritually. That we need to eat it daily, even if we don't feel the effect for that day. Same with food. We eat, we need, our body needs to eat food daily. And if we don't eat on it daily, we're going to begin to feel the effects. And the only way to not feel the effects of not eating is by eating daily. And relating that to the word, if we don't eat the word daily, our physical, not physical, our spiritual body is, a, is going to begin to feel the effect of it. The, you know, we're not spending time with the word, then the enemy's gonna come in. He's gonna start placing little thoughts, start placing doubts, just, just false identities over you because you're not spending time in the living word of God. That's all I have for today. Next week. Regarding that, can I share Yeah. Like, physically speaking, when you don't don't really have a clear mind and it's like the living word where the battle is in the mind if you're not eating from the living word of God you don't have a clear mind you can't Amen. think clearly and yeah that's yeah that's praise the Lord can I ask you that yeah so for example I was actually sharing with the sisters on Thursday that 
um, I had been kind of astray from the Lord mentally. Like I was kind of, I was mentally exhausted. I wasn't thinking straight. I was like very spaced out. But only until um, uh, my grandmother Eva practically forced me to open up the Book of Psalms did I come back into like my own mind. Yeah. And so yeah, it's extremely important like, to, to, to be in the Word because you know if you're not in it, you're not there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. I'll be sharing on the other aspect that the Lord was showing me about the word being a sword. How we can use it as a defensive and at the same time use it as an offensive weapon. But for now, we'll just focus on that. And we're going to break up in two groups.